Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. You guys know that I always like to test and review gear that kind of makes you scratch your head and go, hey, that's pretty cool. Well, today we're gonna be showcasing the Sly Steel Knives Survival Kukri. So, as always, what we're gonna do is cut away. I will do a quick specs rundown of this knife just a beautiful looking blade. And then we're gonna put it to some use and then we'll bring it back 360 for some final thoughts. So without further ado, let's get this party started. All right, let's get this survival kukri from Sly Steel, mamba jamba and on some wood. Now, full disclosure, the wood up here is janky. I'm not gonna cut green live trees because everything is just fighting to live up here at elevation. But let's use a old dead limb. These are pretty much almost like petrified wood. So let's see how this kukri is gonna do. A lot of forward weight feels really good in the hand and look at the cuts look how clean that is now one thing I'm noticing I've been playing around with this before I like the forward choil and I also like that little finger separator one thing it does is it allows me to do that pendulum motion without the kukri sliding down my hand. Not that I don't think that it would because the way that we have some palm swell in the middle of this handle, I don't think that would be a problem. And then what we'll do, I'll try a little bit more like this, then I'll come back to this and then I'll do what I call a backseat grip where I grab it with my index and my middle finger and try to get some momentum. Now, obviously you would probably put a lanyard on or something like that. Um, but I just want to see without any sort of, uh, things to help it out, how it's going to work out. So forward grip, really minimal effort. She likes to just get in there and just eat. Question, why do we always refer to stuff as a woman? I don't know. Ships, trucks. My Jeep, I don't know, but just question out there. Put it in the comments. Now we're gonna go to that middle of the handle hold. Get a little more momentum. And then what I call the back seat grip. Boy, you can really get almost like a whipping action with that. So if you really had to chop something, this wood is just terrible. It's like petrified. Let me hit it. And then the log underneath punky. I'm going through that. So with that, look at that. It's bouncing right off there. That's with that backseat grip. And I'm really getting down on it. Look at that. If you had an elk, you could quarter an elk really quick with that. Not saying that you're gonna go total Conan the Barbarian on something like that, but kukris are just designed as a chopper. And from the looks at, this one is really doing that. So let me get a ferro rod and we'll test this 90 degree spine. So for safety's sake, it's really dry up here. Santa Ana winds have just dried everything out. We're not gonna go full crazy, just fanning sparks off a of ferro rod as much as, as fun as that is, I would love to do that, but we gotta be responsible up here in the woods. So 90 degree spine on the uh, survival kukri. Oh, 
Okay, in the truck, I always keep a couple of pieces of cedar in there just in case you break down and fire starter and all that stuff. So kind of sitting a little bit weird, probably the first time you ever see me in a knife review, probably in a very long time where I ever sat down. But uh, we're gonna try just carving a little bit with this knife. Now, first, the 90 degree spine. Now, this is probably a first for sly steel. I don't think any of their other knives have a robust 90 degree spine. So with that, first let's try scraping a little bit of wood. So if you were having to make some sort of tinder, you could get some fluff real quick and it works really well. Now I'm choked up. I have that finger choil that is in the handle. It allows me to get up in on this recurve and do some fine motor skill stuff. And I always remember a big fan of Ron Hood. And I used to watch a lot of his stuff. I had a few of his VHS tapes. I'm, I'm dating myself by saying VHS tape, but I don't care. It's all right. Ron would always say, you can do little tasks with a big knife, but you can't do big tasks with a little knife. And he's right about that. Now, if you guys have followed along for any length of time on this channel, you guys know that I am a huge fan of recurve style blades. And with a Kukri, inherently you have that recurve design. So it is just automatically gonna make just a really good carver. Now, if you had to get in here and just do traps and feather sticks and all the other stuff that either bushcrafters or hunter gatherers do, which by I'm no means a hardcore bushcrafter, or a hunter-gatherer. I'm just an outdoors guy that just loves history and loves this stuff. But this works really well. Scraping, cutting, and you can always tell a knife by its handle. I mean, personally, I think a handle is the most important thing. And I've been wailing around on this now for a while at the house before this review. A lot of stuff I like to... Uh, play around with it for weeks at a time before I come out here in the woods. That way I can really learn a lot about the aspects of the knife. And um, it's always performed. It's done a really good job. Now I wouldn't sit and whittle from the middle of the handle because of the control. You got a lot of steel out front, but up close, and then if you had to make a bow drill, really nice, robust point on there, which is, if you look, center lined with the handle perfectly. And then they have in the uh, linen micarta, they have the uh, bow drill divot, which I've tried that a couple times. And I was only successful once in doing a fire with a bow drill. But uh, I had a lot of fun doing it too whole family was there so I felt like you know somebody graduating sixth grade camp in front of their parents it was a fun time so you guys want to see more chopping so let's cut away and there's a down tree probably 50 yards away that's got some limbs on it hey guys uh, so uh, real quick John asked me to help out in this uh, one of the things I wanted to show was this uh, lanyard system, I've talked about lanyards uh, systems in, 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 video, in a video here in the past. And this large lanyard system, it does two things. First and foremost, well, this isn't the primary reason, but it's a great reason I have such a large uh, lanyard on this one. Uh, I'm able to choke up really tight and, and do small tasks with this. In this case, I'm moving the, the, the lumber away from me. So whatever small items uh, that I'm trying to do where I'm just using the edge, Having this uh, lanyard that I was able to slip through my arm 
takes a lot of the weight off the handle so I'm not having to juggle and it makes it a lot safer to get in and and do small tasks uh, or if I was a uh, I'm, so, I'm you know doing some kind of kitchen prep or whatever I'm maybe getting some food ready whatever whatever the case may be where I just need to get up tight and that just helps to take some of the weight but the, uh, the real reason I have this and let's get on to the test is so that I can then throw I throw my thumb through that loop and it wraps around my hand and this sucker is very secure so whether I'm choking up high on that grip or I want to go further back I mean th this thing is, a, is it's staying in the hand so I wanted to show you all first that that way to choke up on it and, and it takes up and goes right into the arm you could almost use it like a ulu. Correct. So if I, yeah, actually, yeah, uh, if I was skinning out game or whatever, and this is all all you got for some reason, you lost your pocket knife or your skinning knife, so uh, then you're able to get in and do some some delicate tasks. And again, this takes up a lot of the weight. But the primary reason, because it is a chopper, is so that I can wrap it around the hand. So it's on the thumb going on the back of the hand, and now it's really secure. So we're going to give uh, a couple chops. I just want to get the feel of this. I really like this design. It's uh, kind of a kukri uh, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Parang hybrid. So let's just uh, get to some action. So I'm just going to do a couple cuts. I want to see how well it digs in. Bark's probably going to go flying off. First I'm going to do light. Get my leg out of the way. Wow, that did in well. And I'm not gorilla gripping this. I'm, I'm holding it really somewhat loosely. I'm letting this do the work. And plus I got the security of that lanyard. So just some light chops in there. Giving it a little bit more of a whale. If anything, I use my fingers kind of more uh, a pinch grip. And just as a direction. To give the tool a direction on the angle. As opposed to just really biting down on the hand. I don't need to do that. Now really good, and again, just letting the tool do the work. Uh, another thing I'm doing is there's a lot of information going between the handle and the fingers of hot spots, or you know where do I want to grip more, grip less? Do I want to use more of the the pinky and the ring finger versus the index in the middle, which is what I'm doing now, more pinky and index. Uh, anyone that studies Japanese samurai work, they know that. Pinky and ring fingers are very valuable in, in sword play, but also in any kind of a control here. Biting down really good. Yeah, bites down really well. And this is some old wood that's very, man, that's just in there. I don't know if this is kind of like a, is it a V? I guess it's a V. At first I thought it was a uh, little bit of a convex, but man, that sucker is doing a great job taking out those chips. I mean, this is working like a, like a hatchet for me. I'll zoom in on the cut so they can see it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to take all this off. I just want to get a feel for it. But, uh, this is all you got. This is all you got. It's like petrified wood. Yeah, this stuff is no joke. But uh, that's good enough for now. Again, I always take it easy. It's, it's really easy to get excited and just start wailing away. But if you're seeing, I'm taking my time. There's no rush on any of this. I mean, it's taking some good chunks out. Yeah, it is. I'm very impressed. And... One of the ways I check an edge is I, I put it up, I don't know if we're going to go off screen, but I put it on, on at the sunlight. So I'm letting the sun hit the apex and I'm looking for any shine for evidence of chips and whatnot. And I'm not seeing it on here. I mean, I could tell the sucker's still sharp. So my whittle stick. I mean, even for choking back, I think John already kind of demonstrated uh, some of the small task stuff on this. and. Right here, it's biting in really well. Again, the whole Rambo fantasy of one knife's going to do it all. <laughs> this may be. 
I mean, I, it, it is a big blade. You always want to have, I mean, I got like four knives on me right now for different tasks, but hey, if you lose a knife or it gets broken or something, I would be okay with this having to do, especially how I had to that lanyard system. I'm going to come over and rest on my Jeep. One, the old girl hasn't been in videos in a while, and she gets jealous if we don't showcase her every once in a while. So, with that, let's have some final thoughts on the Sly Steel Survival Kukri. First off, workmanship. I've owned a couple Sly Steel knives, and the workmanship is just outstanding. Now, Oliver over there at Sly Steel, I have to admit, he's like the Tony Stark of knife designers. Um, he comes up with some awesome stuff and he's always thinking to improve on designs, to improve on gear, and he listens to you folks out there. That's what I love. So shout out to Oliver over there at Sly Steel Knives, aka the Tony Stark of uh, knife designers. Now for the kukri. You guys know that I am a huge fan and I said it already in the video and I'm going to repeat it again like just a drunken sailor. I love recurved blades. I just do. Uh, if I could hug this knife and not get cut, I would hug it. I just, I love it. I love, one, it's the forward weight of a kukri. It's, it's just... It's in the pedigree to chop, and it does that extremely well. Now, the wood up here, I'm going to be frank. The wood up here sucks, but you got to keep in mind, we had a forest fire years ago. There's trees that are down, and a lot of this wood has been hardened by heat and just over time. So we're using what we have, and I'm respecting nature. We don't want to cut live stuff. So enough of that. But. 90 degree spine, like I said earlier, first time we've ever seen it on a sly steel knife. And that's because they're listening to the viewers out there, viewer feedback from a lot of their designs. It has the Shango notch. Um, the jury's out on the Shango notch. And I talked to Joe Flowers, the original designer of the Shango notch. I'm not a fanboy of it, probably because I don't know how to use it as far as like being able to use it effectively. And I've tried. I, I don't know if it's just I'm anatomically challenged in being able to use that. But for some reason, I just I can't get the blade at the right angle. But there's folks out there that are able just to spray sparks with it. And if you can, if you're a fan of the Fango... Fango Notch, God, I can't even talk. Shango Notch, then it's on there for you. Now, awesome thumb ramp. The jimping is not overly aggressive. I like that in a knife. Uh, I don't wear gloves. I just, I just don't like wearing gloves. I like being able to uh, handle the tool and the material with my bare hands. One, for me, it just gives me more control of the knife, of the tool, what I'm doing, the dexterity issue. And um, I've just never been a fanboy of gloves. But maybe that's why I'm getting cut all the time. I don't know. But with that said, the thumb ramp and the jimping is just nice rounded edges. And you get a really good hold on that. Now you have the finger choil, really deep well. I think it serves this blade well in regards to having that pendulum. Now, my friend Jaime stepped in. He did uh, some chops with this, and he put that lanyard on. And that's the first time i ever seen a lanyard uh, in use on a big knife like this. And I learned something new today. So that really gets me thinking now outside of the box about all the different capabilities of being able to use this knife. And as Jaime talked about chopping, getting up close, food prep, fine motor skills up with the tip, your uh, gutting fish, your skinning animals. 
especially getting up and if you have that uh, lanyard on and you can almost use this big sweeping part of the kukri like a ulu so i mean you're only limited by your imagination and it just goes to show that's why i bring knowledgeable people on the channel because i'm a student as well i i don't claim to be the know-it-all of everything and i was blown away when i saw that today so shout out to uh my buddy Jaime on that. The handle, just awesome, classic, sly steel, Makarta handles with bow drill divot, awesome liners in there. The um, video camera does not do it justice. They just pop. The pommel has a flare, so you can get in there and you can hold it in multiple configurations. Now, this one is a prototype, so I don't have the actual sheath for this blade. It's my understanding that when they go full production mode on this knife, that it's going to be some sort of ballistic nylon with a Kydex insert inside of it. So, um, be on the lookout for that. But, with that said, if you want to learn more about this knife... I'll leave links to uh, Slive Steel Knives. So with that said, if you are not a subscriber, please, what are you waiting for? Pull the trigger, subscribe. It'll do a lot to help us out here on the channel. But more importantly, please share these videos. Right now with YouTube, with the algorithm, they're burying content like this. So if you could help out, share it with your friends, all you got to do is go down, especially with a smartphone if you have the app, is click where it says share, copy the link, send it out on a text message to your buddy, to your friends. It would help me out a lot being able to help get the word out and grow the channel. And with that, I thank you so much for watching. I thank you for your support, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care, folks.